Okay, so new section. Epistemology, which is a fun word you can use to impress your friends. Epistemology, or sound like you're swearing when you're not. Okay, this is the study of knowledge. Study of knowledge, epistemology. All right, so hearkening back to our study over truth. Okay, hearkening, you like that word? Thank you. Harkening back to our study over truth, now that we know what truth is, which is, somebody remind me, or at least we're relatively sure what it is, what is truth? Between what? Statement and reality. Yeah, very good, very good. Okay, now we need to ask, what does it mean to know the truth? Okay, there are things, let's just, let's just pause for a second and think about, there are things that you know. <laughs> Things that you know about life, about yourself, about, you know, stuff around you, the world around you, okay? Things that, like, feel, like, think for a second, think about your thinking, right? And think for a second how that feels to know something. You know what it's like to almost know something, right? And you feel like, well, it's there, but it's not real, like, yeah, I just feel like I'm barely holding on. But you also know what it means, like, I know beyond shadow of a doubt, I know this is my, might be how you'd explain it to yourself, Right? I mean, you know that feels in your mind. Well, what is that? Is what we're trying to get at. And how do we how do we know that we know something? Is it just based on that feeling we have in our brains, or is it something else? Okay. So the word uh, epistemology comes from the Greek root episteme, okay, episteme, which means knowledge. So when we talk about epistemology, we're talking about, and then we have the ology at the end, right, which means study of. Okay, so it's the study of knowledge. So it is the branch of philosophy that studies knowledge or justified belief. I want you to get used to thinking about knowledge, the word knowledge, the concept of knowledge in that term. Okay, the term, uh, the the way, different way of saying it is justified belief. Might not sit well with some of you, and that's okay. Where you think about knowledge, belief, those are like two different things, maybe in your brain. But think about it. Think about it. Well, I'll, I'll make a case for you. Think about those as the same thing. Not just any belief, but a justified belief. Okay, start thinking about it in those terms. Okay, so here's some questions that this, this field of study uh, talks about. What is knowledge exactly? What is knowledge? We know what it kind of what it feels like to know things, but what is that knowledge? Okay, is it just like stuff? that we know, <coughs> or is it something more than that? And what qualifications, think carefully about this one, what qualifications must be met before you can say that you actually know something and you're legit in saying that? What qualifications must be met? Like, do you have to not be impaired in any way? Do you have to have read a certain number of books on it? Do you have to have experienced something? Right? Do you see what I mean? Okay. What qualifications must be met in order for you to say, I know that. I know that. Okay. What has to happen or what do you have to, what other things do you have to know or what do you have to have done? Okay. What qualifications must be met? Then it also considers the question of should any claim of knowledge be considered valid? This kind of goes back to the qualifications thing, but should any, if any time anybody says, I know this, should you believe them? And if you don't believe them, what would it take for you to go, okay, yeah, 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 we're, we're tracking now. I believe you. Okay, what, what is that? What, what normally, and, and then is that the same for everybody? Okay, is it the same for my four-year-old, who most of you met on Friday? He was good, was he not? He was great. Super quiet, working on a puzzle over there? I was pretty proud of him. <laughs> uh, he was so excited about coming to work with mom. So excited. Not going to lie, the most exciting part was packing his lunch in a lunchbox. <laughs> he's been wanting to do that all year. And most of the time I don't. I'm like, you get a lunch at school, you're fine. And he's like, but I want to take it into my Avengers lunchbox. So that happened on Friday. It was a big deal. Um, okay. So is it the same for everybody? So if, I'm get, if my four-year-old is going to say, I know this, right? I know that this is how you make the number four. I think he's working on number five this week. But this, I know this is how you, how you draw it. Like, are, are, is the criteria the same for him as it would be for anybody else, right? For him to say that he knows something, am I going to hold him to the same standards as I am you guys? 
or my mom or President Faulkner. Okay, so it's this this criteria for knowledge is really pretty interesting because it's again like most things we talk about in here one of those things that we we feel like we know but the moment that we try to list the list the criteria for knowledge we're like yeah I don't know <laughs> I mean it feels like there is some but then we don't know exactly what that criteria is okay so interesting times okay here's some more questions that this field of study will help us address or even maybe help us answer Okay, is it possible to know such things as, I live in a world with billions of other people? What do y'all think? Can we know that? Can we know that? No. Yes? That's Why do you say yes? People that were like, uh, we don't want to be a part of this, and so they went into hiding. I guess maybe <laughs> that leaves you in a gray area. <laughs> there are no gray areas, so. <laughs> They're just things we don't know. <laughs> Okay, just as you say no, we can't know it. I mean, I don't know that it's like, I've been told that it's gonna know. Okay, what would it take for you to think for you to know it? I guess I'd have to meet a billion people. Okay, so you'd have to you'd have to experience it, have an experience. Okay, okay, valid. How about this one? I can see other people sitting in the room with me. Can you know that you see other people sitting in the room with you? Yeah. Why? Because I'm not on hallucinogenic. <laughs> okay. So there's no defeaters present that you're aware of. And, and you're not blind. That would be a defeater, right? That you're visually impaired. Okay. Uh, and you're experiencing it directly, right? That what that claim you're, is, is directly accessible to you via your senses. It's not, no one else is telling you that. You are doing it, <laughs> having the experience now. Right, all of your eyes getting wider, like mine are. <laughs> no? Okay. I had coffee and Irish oats for breakfast on Saturday morning. You know what Irish oats are? Steel cut oats? They're really good. They're really good. <laughs> okay, can you know, uh, can you know that? Yeah. Jesse's not here, so we'll pick on Dante. Uh, did you have breakfast this morning? No. You didn't? Did you have supper last night? Ish. Okay, what'd you have? Uh, That's not something. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what what'd you have at McDonald's? If you had if you did you have like what you really usually get at McDonald's, you have a normal thing you get? Well I mean no, I just had like snacks, but I had I ate leftovers, but I ate really uh I'm bringing help earlier. Okay. So, That's not bad. I had, like, a Mick double. This Mick prefix drive me crazy. It's like the I prefix in front of everything, right? The Mick double. Okay, how do you know that? Okay. Okay. That is. Okay. If that's all you had, would that be enough for you? That's all you had to tell you that you had a Mick double. Not really. No. What else would you need for you to know that that you had a Mick double last night? I mean, I can just tell you all I had. <laughs> Gross. We can go to McDonald's and talk to people. Like, there's Dustin Dustin last night. Did you really get him a McDonald's? Did you give him something that looked like a McDonald's? That tasted like a McDonald's? That was. Oh, let's just say the let's just say the word McDouble three more times. Okay, McDouble, McDouble, McDouble. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. So all of these things. So this would be in your in your memory, right? I remember eating it. I remember how it tasted. Kind of gross, but weirdly satisfying. And then, right? I have a wrapper, okay, in the floorboard of my car. I've got uh, witnesses, right? Did you go with anybody? Or were you by yourself? Okay. But you got witnesses, maybe that work there. Okay. All right, so all of these things combined, right, this is like a cumulative case, okay? If Dante is going to make a case that he did indeed eat a McDouble or something resembling a McDouble last night, then he's going to bring all of these facts together. And together, we don't normally list them out for ourselves, right? We just think, I remember having, yeah, I had one, right? But if we really had to prove something that we know that we did, even if we're like proving it to myself, right? If I'm like, oh, man, I forgot, you know, last night's kind of a blur. I don't know what happened. Then we'd like retrace and be like, yep, yeah, I think I did have one. Yep, there's the wrapper. Oh, here's the receipt. Oh, yeah, yeah, I saw that guy in the parking lot, right? And we'd build a case for ourselves that, yeah, we do know that. 
Okay, does that make sense? Okay. No. Okay. Although in the last class we did argue for the legalization of marijuana. I missed that one. That's pretty good. Okay. How about something how about something even crazier like this? I know there is a God that created this world. Can you know that? Every time, every time I list this, even after we've talked about truth, after we've talked about subjective and objective claims, I get to this and I put it up there and everybody's like, absolutely not. You can't know that. If it's an objective claim, what do I have to do to prove that? You have to have evidence on why you believe it's there. You're not saying it's bad. No, I don't have to have evidence on why I believe it's there. That's that true. would be a subjective thing. I would have to have evidence about that claim. Oh, okay. Right? This is an objective claim. I don't have to give you evidence for a subjective claim. I just have to say it. <laughs> right? Because it's inside. Okay? If that's, an, if that's an objective claim, look, if there is a God that created the world, then he created, he, she, it created the world that you live in, too. Because <laughs> there's just one world, as far as we know. At least that we inhabit. Okay? Does that make, does that make sense? So this is an objective claim, because I'm claiming it not just about my reality, but your reality, too. The reality. Okay, so if I'm gonna, if that's gonna be an objective claim, then I'm gonna have to go find evidence for that. Now that's a hefty, that's a hefty task, right? But let's just say, for sake of argument, I'm not arguing either way, but let's just say that I did find evidence and I presented it to you. Could you then know that? Yeah, provide the evidence. Yeah, provide the evidence. Okay, get somewhere. Man. Is it possible to know anything and everything? Are there some things that you can't know? Not that you don't know, but that you can't know. I don't know. Okay, like what? What someone else is thinking. What if they told you what they're thinking? They could be lying. So technically, <laughs> that's cheating. <laughs> technically, you could know what someone's thinking. Why not? Two-year-old. I mean, oh, you could know. Yes. Okay. Why? Because they tell you? No, not because they tell you, just off of patterns. Amazon just did a study last year where they could know to the day every single thing that someone was going to buy and went ship it to them beforehand. And with over 90% <coughs> accuracy, you could say within five steps where somebody would be up to two years in advance. Okay, good example. So up to 90% accuracy. Does that qualify to you? This is a legit question. Does that qualify to you as knowledge? 90%. So if I'm 90% sure that my parents are Jim and Debbie Dompier of Eagle River, Alaska, is that, is that good? good? Is that good enough for you? There's a 10% chance that they're not, right? If there's a 90% chance that I'm sure, that means there's a 10% chance that it's not true. What's your opportunity to cost? <laughs> Brittany. I want my heart surgeon to be 90% sure he can do this. Okay, but people go into surgery all the time with a 90% success rate. Right? They actually think that's pretty good. 90% shot, oh, he'll be fine. Right? Is what we hear. And usually they are, because it's 90%, right? Yeah, but you still got your name on this piece of paper. Yeah. And you have a 90% yeah. So this is, this is an interesting question, though. What if, okay, let's take the lottery. Let's take the lottery thing. What if... What if every time I have entered the lottery, why well, I enter the lottery once a month, and every month I win, every month I win for the last seven years? Let's just say, let's just say, I probably would still be here. Actually. Yeah, I probably would. Yeah, I'd be really rich, but I would. Yeah, I'd be here. Okay, so so let's just say, let's just say that's the case. Would I know that this month I'm going to win the lottery? Well, you would be reasonable to believe that you wouldn't. Okay, but would I know? So before this, before this little example, y'all said ninety percent was good enough. I'm talking about odds that are greater than ninety percent. This happened every time. So, but now you say no. I don't. I don't know that. I mean, the suitors were given like a. Let's not talk about that. That was painful and embarrassing. I mean, the Arkansas game was worse. 
Gross. And now we're going to yeah, go away from me. And now we're talking about, uh, and now we're headed into Texas, and that's just going to be a slaughterhouse. Anyway, somebody was like, maybe, maybe they'll get overconfident and they won't practice. And I'm like, yeah, I don't think so. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I said. Okay. So let me let me let me ask you this then about the percentage thing. I'm just I, because we're going to talk about it later in the lecture, not today, but later. Like, what where are you at with knowledge, okay, and percentage wise? Like before you said 90 percent, but now you're saying maybe not. So like, in order for you to know something, does it have to be 100 percent, or does it have to? Can it be less than that? I mean, it's a legit question. I'm not leading to anything. I'm just wondering. It has to be 100 percent? No, I disagree. I don't know anything at 100. percent so when we say that I'm, okay, let me ask you this, put it a different way. When you say that you're certain about something, do you mean 100% or do you mean almost 100%? Over 50% or maybe over 75 It would have to be 100% because it's like a certainty. Okay, but, well, right. I mean, that, that would be maybe what the textbook definition would be. But when you use it in your life, when you say, oh, I'm certain, do you mean 100% or, or do you usually mean? No. More I mean, likely than not, but not 100%. I mean, 100% that I believe it might not happen, but I believe it will happen. So you're certain about your own beliefs, but yeah. well, yeah, but that's not really what I'm asking. Well, I believe that um, yeah, when someone has knowledge, <laughs> I imagine that <laughs> knowledge is different in the way that people remember it and how they uh, and how they tell it. Okay. Because there's always a uh, you know this difference. Yeah, truth is perception. <coughs> it's not though. <coughs> There's a relationship between a statement and a reality. So yeah. my question is, how certain do you need to be about that truth until you say, I know it? You have to be 100%. Okay. Most people would like to say, you know, it's about a range of 95. Okay. 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 Or you could be like Dante and like, certainty is not my jam. <laughs> You're like, I live my life a little more exciting than that. I don't really. <laughs> oh, I love you guys more than you know. Okay. Let's talk about this. This is where it starts getting a little uncomfortable. Okay. Is it possible to know truths in areas such as ethics, morality? What do you think, Brittany? <laughs> Brittany's in my ethics class right before this, is why I'm asking her. I love hate that class. Love hate. I flipped the chair today. <laughs> what do you think? Is it possible to know truths in areas such as ethics? Is it ethics is what is ethics, Brittany? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm picking on you. <laughs> so ethics is the branch of philosophy that, that deals with the study of morality and then theories that regulate what morality is. Okay. So uh, so people notoriously have different views on ethics, right? On what morality is, on what's morally right, morally acceptable, morally unacceptable. So my question is, is it possible to know truths in areas such as that, where it's dealing with morality? Justice is an emphatic no. No? Why not? Okay. So now, now be careful. So Dante, are you going to say that, it, that it's all subjective, like morality Truths in the areas of morality are all subjective. Okay. 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 I agree with everything that you're saying except for truth for me. Because as we know, there's only one truth. Right. So let me ask you this to get at to get at what I'm trying to point out. Is it possible that because I agree that the way that you're raised, how you're raised, where you're raised, what the experiences you've had in your life, that's all going to influence the way that you see and, and perceive morality. What's right, what's wrong, what's acceptable in a certain certain situation, what's not. But let me ask you this. Are there some people with those perceptions who are wrong in their perceptions? Yeah. Absolutely, there are. So the, the very 
the very reason that we can say that they're wrong means that there is a morality that is not just subjective, right? Because if it was all subjective, then each one of their opinions would be equally right. Does that make sense? Well, they're just wrong because it's against the grain. Okay, that'd be the next. That'd be the next question. Is it wrong because most of us think that it's wrong and they're just the outliers, or is there something about the action itself that's intrinsically bad? Okay, let's let's take it right. Let's. But then we could say, well, who made the laws? Maybe they were out to lunch or whatever. Like, right. So let's think about something that's usually pretty easy to see. Okay, Mur murder. Okay, which we could define. We've talked about this before. Which we could define as killing another human for no good reason. Okay? Y'all agree for the most part? Okay. So, could it be is it possible that some people would have in their in their raising, in their environment, in their whatever twisted growing up they had where they thought that was okay? Yes, Jeffrey Dahmer. Okay. Okay. He had his reason. His reason was sexual release. Right. They, well, and among other things, yeah, they do they do have a lot they have reasons, okay? But are they still wrong? Uh, he's killing for a reason. You're figuring the reason, not the act. If you kill to save your kid, you had a reason. He killed for okay. reverse reasons. So if you have a reason, does that make the act itself okay, or is there something about the act that's intrinsically you bad? You aren't arguing the act. You're arguing the reason. You just don't like the reason. We did it to save a little kid. No, what I'm asking, Justice, is about the act. What I'm asking is about the act. Is there something about the act that makes it bad? Would you say murder? Something from because of murder, because of a reason. Well, killing, I mean, but murder. that's why we differentiate. Because killing, you could say, like, what about wartime? Oh, I said murder. There's a, right, so right. A She's talking about killing with no good reason. But everybody kills for a reason, that's what I said. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> We're talking about someone in reality. Okay, so, so, okay, so if Justice is going to press the issue, we'll go with it. So what... Is there, are there reasons to kill, reasons to murder, that make that act okay? And I don't mean for the, from the person's, from the murderer's perspective. I mean... Yes. Okay. I, I would think so due to the heat. Against the uh, sense of evolution and how we're just animals. I mean, I think even if you do murder to save your child, you're still gonna have like yeah, it's so still like, like burn into your image. You're gonna still have you're to go counseling. Counsel. I mean, you know, the last chapter we said for the greater good, so then technically, so, if it was for the greater good, so like, is there well, that's not the only moral theory in town. It's called utilitarianism, but what it's is, not the only one. What if somebody's trying to murder you, but before they can murder you? Well, counter murder. Okay. Count, yeah. Preemptive murder. <laughs> a counter murder. <laughs> counter murder would be like after the fact, which you couldn't really do because you'd be dead. But yeah, that's <laughs> premeditated. So you could get in trouble for that, or is it self defense? Okay. Okay, but hang on. Now we're talking about the difference between self defense and. Okay, this is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. This is a fun class. <laughs> <laughs> Let's. We're gonna. We're gonna circle back because this is almost as frustrating to me as the religious question. But. But we'll get back to it. Yeah, I actually think. I actually think it's a little more sticky than religious truth. I do. I do. Okay, is it possible to have knowledge of religious truths? You know what, we're just going to skip right past that because I'm tired of talking about it. Okay, <laughs> if the answer is yes, let's just say, if the answer is yes to either of those, yes, it's possible to know truths in ethical situations, moral, morality issues. Yes, it's, possi it's possible. I don't mean that you know it or that I know it. I'm just saying it's possible to have knowledge of religious truths. They are the kinds of things that we can know. Okay? Not saying anybody knows them for sure. I'm just saying they're the kinds of things that we can know. You don't do this. We hold it here so it's true. Uh, sort of, but just the fact of us holding it here doesn't make it true. We hold it there because it is true, because it matches with reality. Okay? Okay, but 
the, the question we're talking about now is not necessarily whether people agree, not as, I'm just talking, is it possible that ethical truths and religious truths are the type of things that we could know? I'm not saying we do know them, I'm just saying are they the types of things that we could know? We know what it's like to know things. I mean, I know what it means, but we know what it's like to know things, okay? You all in our past three celebrations of knowledge that we've had <laughs> in this class, right, have demonstrated that you know things. Okay, you know things. Not just memorize things, but you've written stuff and proven to me that you know things. Okay, so we know what it's like to know things, right? But, so what I'm asking is, is it possible that these are the same types of things? Is it possible? Yes. Okay. Yes? No? Yes. If there is a truth, it is possible to know it. That's the only question. That may be the best thing you've ever said in this class. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. If there is a truth, then it's possible to know it. I'm not saying anybody does know it. I'm just saying it's possible to know it. But could we comprehend it? Well, that's a different question. <laughs> but it's tied It's tied to this in the sense of what does it mean to know something, mm -hmm. right? So, like, some of, cause some of you are like, listen, you told me I know stuff on that test. I don't know nothing, right? I just memorized it, held it in my brain, and then, whoosh, you know, flushed it out on my way out the door, okay? I None, none of that's left in there. I, I understand. I get that. That's possible. That's why I assign a lot of writing questions so that I can see your thought process, okay? So you actually have to know something in order to write something down. Some of you just left it blank, and <coughs> thus I'm pretty sure you don't know anything about that. But that's okay. Maybe you know something about something else. Okay, so all I'm asking is if it's possible, if these are the kinds of things it's possible to have knowledge about. Okay? If it is possible, which you're kind of saying that maybe it is, is this a different kind of knowledge? In these, these sticky areas like religion and ethics where people get all hot and bothered really quick, is it, is it a different kind of knowledge? Is uh, so if it's if it is a different kind, are the re are the requirements to know something different in these areas than they are in other areas, like in what you know, knowing what you had to eat your McDouble one, last night? Okay. Are the requirements different? Are they less rigorous or are they more rigorous? Like, do you have to jump through more hoops to prove to me that you know these things in these areas, or is it the same? Right. Some, some of you are saying way more. Way some of you are saying the same. More. more and ethics. Mm -hmm. More. You'd have to go into greater detail, or not detail, but you know what I mean. You'd okay. have to explain it. You'd have to have a lot more of uh, proof, a lot more power in your. Now I'm not talking about conversion, right? I'm not talking about getting you to think the same way I do. I'm just getting talking about getting you to agree that I know this. Yeah. Hundred percent certainty. Still hundred percent certainty. I feel like you would have to jump through more hoops because if you're like saying I have proof, you would have to appeal to way more people than just I had a McDouble. Okay. You would have to appeal like, across cultures. Yes. And they might have different standards of right? what. Because as, as much as we hate to admit it, a McDouble is a McDouble the world around. People know what a McDouble is. Even if they don't, they know what a Mc anything is. <laughs> Right? So there, there's a common ground there, but there's far less common ground in these areas, right? So I agree. I think that's a really good point. That may be one of the best things you've ever seen this class. It works. Okay. So let's, let's continue our little investigation here, okay? What kind of a thing is knowledge? What is it? Is it a thing? Okay. What, what exactly is that? Have anybody ever wondered this before? Like, not the things that we know, because we know what it means to know things, but like knowledge itself. Have you ever wondered what that is? Is knowledge truth, or is it self-truth, or is it the truth like everybody knows? What do you all think? Knowledge is how it is both subjective <laughs> and like actual it. Okay, what do you think? Can knowledge be both subjective and objective? Knowledge is the amount of information. No. Yeah. Okay, so knowledge is a quantity. Okay, so knowledge is information. So when I hear information streaming to me through the radio or through things I read or through the TV. If you're retaining it, then you're Okay, so then it's not just information, it's information that you retain. Well, you don't know it if you didn't retain it. So if I hear information and I retain it, do I know it? Yeah. I can see how this is. Like it's, it's maybe you know, you may know it, but you can't 
or have I just memorized it? Yeah, I don't need even a ladder. You can just like. Okay, so now I hear it, now I retain it, and now I use it. Now I know it? No, I meant knowledge or intelligence. Yeah, intelligence is a part of the deadline. Is this Bloom's taxonomy? Is it, yeah, Bloom's taxonomy all over again? Maybe. Maybe we should bring it back up. Okay. Is it a relational property like truth? Like, is it a relational property between me and the information? Kind of like we're talking about here. Where I have to have a relationship with it in the sense that, like, I've taken it in, I actually use it, right? I comprehend it, okay? Like Terry was saying earlier. I mean, is it, is it that kind of a thing? So it's not really a thing. It's a relational property. Okay, it's possible. Is it a human convention? Now, look. Not, don't confuse this with information. Okay, information definitely is, right? We create information, okay? But I'm not talking about information, I'm talking about knowledge. Is that a human convention? Is it discovered or is it created? Now, I don't mean the things that you know, I mean knowledge. Discovered. Discovered. I, I really don't know. Like, discovered with like your point. How do you know that you don't know? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. No. Ah. We're not getting into this. Ah. Just okay. Does what? Here's another question. Does what qualifies as knowledge vary from culture to culture or person to person? I don't mean the things that they know. I mean what qualifies as knowledge. Is it the same for all humans, no matter what no. culture, no matter what person they are? So, like, like say no. And of like, it doesn't maybe, vary. You're saying it does. It's the same for everybody. Uh, it varies. Or it varies. Okay. Why does it stay the same? Well, I mean, it's just like I know what people do with it. No where I'm at, I know what people do with it. It's just like applying something and just knowing something. I feel like knowledge is just knowing something. You know, uh -huh. you could be wherever you are and just know it, regardless of where you're at. You just like know that information. Uh -huh. Wherever you're born and wherever you're from. Uh -huh. Like Bob read this book. Remember, I read it here or read it in China. I still read that book. Mm -hmm. I read that book. So mm -hmm. I knowledge in that book. Yeah, but in a lot of places, knowledge is survival. So, I mean, what we might think is knowledge might be Steve Jobs, but what somebody in Alaska might think is knowledge is that really good fisherman over there that's staying alive. Because yeah. you can read all the books you want, start with it, and read them. Well, that's just like, where you find them located. See, that's my point. So it's different. If you're in a big city and book smarts is what makes yeah. you excel, what makes you thrive, and you have that knowledge to do that, then you're smart. You're in the right place to use your knowledge. Basically, though, you're talking about application of yeah, what you know. Yeah, I was going to say, we're yeah, talking about what qualifies yeah. as knowledge. Yeah, you can still be a really good fisherman in Western City. Have books, smart knowledge. It's like it's still knowledge. <laughs> but I'm saying, yeah, it's like, because there's different types of knowledge, it's still knowledge. Listen, that was my that was my childhood, right? Shotgun over one arm, book in the other hand. Okay. I love <laughs> Okay. Interesting. You guys are you guys are on fire today. This is good. This is good. Whatever happened this weekend, did you get? Because now you're the first time we actually get to get into something. I'm gonna let it out. Slide show, slide show, slide show, right? Slide show. Listen. Sorry. You've done a pretty good job speaking your mind, even in the midst of the slide show, slide show, slide show. So I'm not gonna fall asleep. I gotta talk. Okay. Uh, okay. Interesting times. So some of you say yes, it varies. Some of you say no, it doesn't. Uh, Dante also, many of you are saying some of the best things you've said all semester. Dante, that was a good one. Okay. So to answer these types of questions, we got to be more specific about what we mean by knowledge, which all of you are like, yes, that's what I've been asking this whole time. Okay. So let's, let's talk about a little bit about what it means. Uh, there are three types of knowledge. Okay. Three types of knowledge. So let's do the first one. The first one is called knowledge by acquaintance. Okay, knowledge by acquaintance. And this is sometimes we refer to this as knowing of something. Okay, knowledge by acquaintance. This knowledge by acquaintance means the thing, whatever it is you're talking about, is directly present to your consciousness. So remember the, the one that says, I know I'm sitting in a room with, uh, with other people. Remember that statement, right? We're like, yeah, we know that because we see it. It's like right here. Like we're experiencing it. No one's telling us about that. Which I'm, it's me doing it, right? I see that, okay? So this is also, you can refer to this knowledge by acquaintance as personal experience, okay? Or knowing someone or something personally, okay? Um, the example that I usually, well, the, the reason why there's a picture of the ocean there, how many of you have been to the ocean? 
Has anybody never been to the ocean? Okay, okay. Have you, but do you know what it looks like, right? Have you talked to somebody who's been to the ocean? Have you maybe seen pictures on their phone slash that one? Have you seen maybe a video of them surfing or walking in the waves or something like that? Okay. Have you heard people describe it? Those of you that haven't been, have you heard people describe it to you? What? And so based on that and pictures, what do you think it's like? Like describe what the ocean is like. Vast. I'm from Long Beach, so it's gross. Yeah, it's Long Beach is disgusting. It smells like fish. Okay. Okay. Good. So even though you haven't, you know, you know something about it, but you don't really, you don't really know it because you haven't really been there. Right. Um, another one is like this. How many people know my husband? Patrick Brown over there. Right. How many of you know him like I do? Please. Everybody saying not me. <laughs> okay. No, you certainly do not. Okay. Now, how many of you know, like, yeah, I've got, I have a husband who teaches over there, but I don't exactly know who he is. And I know. Okay, there's probably some of you that are like, yeah, I know he works over there, but I don't know who he is. <laughs> then we're going to have words out here. <laughs> and I could probably take you. <laughs> Remember the shotgun thing? Okay. okay. She says, I got reach. That's right. I got skills. Plus, I watched Taken this weekend again for like the 17th time. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so look. This, this is when something is directly present to your consciousness, when you're experiencing it, okay? There's a different type of knowledge, right? Some of you that, um, how many of you have heard in, in uh, have heard live a band that you liked and listened to a lot of their stuff before that, right? So you like listened to a lot of the recordings, then you went and heard them live. Was it like, oh yeah, that's like their recordings, or was it so much more awesome? So much more awesome. Yeah, hopefully they weren't all drunk or something and it was a good concert, right? Same thing for me and you two. I saw you two up at uh, uh, OU like eight years ago now, I guess. Man, that was a long time ago. But it was sweet. It was so great. I was way up in the, uh, I almost said marijuana seats, but that's what it was. Like way up there, but it was so, it was so awesome. It was so awesome. Okay, it's a totally different experience, okay? Last example I'll give you. Uh, before I moved to Oklahoma, I worked at a college in Pennsylvania, really tiny town, smaller than Poto, okay, but I had a college, four-year college there. Um, while I was there, President Obama, well, then Senator Obama, was campaigning for the presidency for the first time. He came to that tiny, tiny town, okay, smaller than Poto, right, Poto, America, came to that tiny town called Beaver, Pennsylvania. <laughs> That's right. Which was actually the next town over from mine, which is called Beaver Falls. <laughs> yeah, no joke. The falls were about this high outside of a sewage treatment plant. <laughs> so there you go. Yeah, this was over. The, it, real pretty out in the eastern side, western side, not so much. Okay, it's just kind of weird. Okay, so uh, also located in Beaver County. So I don't know what the deal is with beavers, but anyway, so uh, Senator Obama came to Beaver, stood in the middle of a, of a gazebo that was like about half the size of this room in the middle of a park in the middle of the little town of Beaver and spoke. Okay. Now, before this, I had heard him speak on, the, you know, you hear like clips all the time in the news when they're giving, okay. I'd seen him on TV doing debates and stuff like that, right. I, you know how it is when there's an election going on. It's like everywhere, right. So you hear him all the time. But hearing him in person was a completely different experience. He is an excellent speaker, an excellent speaker. And there was no, like, no seats or anything. This was in the middle of a park. Like, everybody just stood around this gazebo, and he just stood there in his, like, jeans and his white shirt that's rolled up like this, like he does sometimes, you know? And he just talked for, like, an hour, and we all stood there for an hour and listened to him. And it was amazing. He was a really, really good speaker. Still is, I guess, but... Right? Really great speaker. Really great campaigner. That was amazing. Okay? Totally different experience than hearing him on the news or seeing him on TV. Okay? That's now, before, I didn't have this, this, this kind of knowledge about President Obama's speech uh, patterns. Okay? And his, in his habits, his oratory uh, prowess. Okay? I didn't have this type of knowledge. But then when I heard him, I did have this type of knowledge. Does that make sense to you? Okay. Okay, so let's uh, whoops, let's give some examples. For example, now you don't have to have all of these, but just have a few so that you know, you, you remind yourself of what we're talking about. Knowing that you have a headache, okay? If you say I have a headache, 
And I say, how do you know? <laughs> it's kind of like that subjective truth thing. Like that sounds stupid to ask, right? What do you mean? How do I? I mean, I feel it. Like <laughs> it's directly present to my consciousness. Is it not? It's right there. Okay. Um, knowing the ball in front of you is red. Okay. Let's say you're looking at a ball. Let's say it's red. You know it's red. Why? Because you see it. It's directly present to you. Okay. There's nothing in between you and it, like another person that says, "Hey, I know you can't see it, but that ball is red." That would not be this type of knowledge, right? Because it wouldn't be directly present to your awareness. That would be like somebody saying, "Hey, the ocean smells like fish," when you've never been there. Okay. This means it's directly present to your awareness. There's nothing between you and it. Okay. Knowing the Atlantic Ocean due to swimming in the Atlantic Ocean. You're like in it. You're experiencing it. Okay? That's different than seeing a picture of it, even a video. Okay? Even different than driving by it and looking at it. Okay? But when you're in it, it's a different experience. Knowing the law of non contradiction, which is what? A and non are. Um Come on. Well, I was going to use the same A and A. There's lots of A's going on. Okay. A cannot equal non A at the same time and in the same sense. Yeah. Okay? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Okay. Knowing 2 plus 2 equals 4. How do you know that? I mean, you can say, well, somebody told me. Well, yeah, but now you know it, right? You know it. You don't have to have somebody tell you. And it's directly, like, you see that. You, you just, it's there. Right? Like it makes sense. It clicks. Okay? Uh, meeting Barack Obama in person. Okay? I didn't get to meet him. I got about from me to Jelani to him. That was pretty close. But uh, experiencing God, some people say, is like this. It's directly a present is directly present to your awareness. It directly it's just there's nothing between you and this experience. Okay? Okay. You good? No knowledge by acquaintance, knowing of. Okay? Experiencing. Okay. Um, second type of knowledge, and we'll stop after this one, okay? Skill knowledge. Skill knowledge. This is knowing how, okay? And now, just even by the names, you're like, okay, I see. that. That's a different type of knowledge. You should feel It should feel different in your brain a little bit, okay? Experiencing something and knowing how to do something is a different type of thing, okay? You could go, you could go to and watch uh, Phil Mickelson play okay and experience that but that doesn't mean you know a lick of how to play make sense okay same thing this is this is legit just having a skill knowing how to do something okay skill knowledge okay examples getting a golf ball fielding a ground ball baking a cake completing a math problem which I have very little skills on that last one okay I could bake a mean cake, but not all not so much. Okay, so listen, this is, and I think I put, yeah. All of these things, this is an interesting little deal about skill knowledge. All of these things are not all or none type of things. Look, the, the first one was, you either been to the ocean or you haven't. Okay, you've either experienced something or you haven't, right? That's like all or none, okay? Even if the experience was short, you still had one, okay? You either met Barack Obama in person or you didn't. Right? All or none. Now, skill knowledge is not like that. Skill knowledge is on a spectrum. Okay? Skill knowledge is one of those things that you can get better or worse at. Okay? Uh, the example I usually use is that before I went to, uh, when I first started my college career, I wanted to go into music, specifically into piano performance, and I was practicing piano about six to seven hours every day. Yeah. Six to seven hours every day practicing piano. That is brutal, <laughs> but also I got pretty good. <laughs> okay, now I spend six to seven hours every year playing piano. Okay, my skill has significantly decreased. <laughs> okay, and I can still read music and kind of that kind of thing, but I'm not. My technique is terrible. I can't. I can't sight read as nearly as well. Right? It's a, a lot worse. Okay. Now, if I were to sit down and practice, it would come a lot better. Probably would come back to me quicker, right? But okay. But do you see how your skills can go up and down like that? And if you're not, and most people with skills will tell you, if you're not actively trying to get better, then you're getting worse, right? If you're just sitting and not, you know, it's not like you're breaking your own fingers or anything. You're just like not doing it. You're not practicing it. Then you're getting worse, okay? But you're never stagnant. 
okay? You're never staying the same. It's like physical conditioning, right? If you're not working out, if you're not trying to stay in shape, then you are getting out of shape, okay? It just happens that way. It's not like you can just stop working out and then stay the same. <laughs> I wish it was, right? You get down to your goal weight and then just cruise on through life right now. No, it never happens that way, right? You're always getting worse, okay? It, or you're getting better, either one, but you're never staying the same, okay? Skill knowledge is like that. But you can get better or worse at deploying your skills. Whatever skills you have, you can get better or worse at it. My, the reason I have a picture of a golfer up there, golf swing, is that my husband used to be, well, he still is really good at golf, but he used to do it a lot more, like played in tournaments and stuff like that, was really, really, really good, really good. And so now uh, he doesn't do it as much, but this summer I tried to, kick him back out onto the golf course so he could do it more. And he found it came back to him. He was really frustrated the first few games. but right. Okay, skill knowledge. You guys are familiar with that. You know what it's like to learn to do something and to and then to lose it, maybe, if you don't do it for a while. Um, okay, third type of knowledge when we come back on Wednesday. Uh, also, there is a reading assignment due on Wednesday. Okay, it's posted. I just made it visible on Blackboard right before I came here. So go look at it on Blackboard and have a three by five card due on Wednesday. Go forth and conquer. Is the assignment available in the book? Yeah. 